Okay, so I made this render right here and recorded the whole thing. So uh, here's how I made this. Okay, so I'm starting this one off here with just a scene block out as usual. Um, the idea for this was I wanted to start with this smiley face. It's not, it's not really a smiley face. I guess like this neutral looking face here. Um, and then that I'm just using a wave texture to drive the alpha of that. Just, you know, in the shader editor, shift A, choose the wave texture and that you could just use to get that like lines in the picture. And then uh, I'm actually dropping in a screenshot of the the Blender UI. Um, I think it was actually this project that I just screenshotted right here and then just layered that on top of this with just another same thing. You just run the color into the alpha and then just choose whatever emission color you want. It's kind of like a cheaty way to add detail, but it's like it's also kind of like a fun Easter egg kind of way that Blender people like to see when you post it. So I don't mind doing that. And then, yeah, I'm just coloring it blue. I did start off blue with this one. I ended up switching the whole thing to kind of this red theme near the end. But um, for most of it, it is this kind of blue theme, which is usually my go-to. I feel like blue is just the easiest um, kind of cyber render color to go off of just to get something started. Um, definitely the most comfortable is just starting off with that. So that's usually what I'll do is just start with something like nice and blue. Right here, I'm going on to um, Unsplash and I'm taking some just random images from Japan and I'm putting that into number one, pure ref. So just a reference document on the side, which you can't see in the recording, but it's off to the side of my screen outside the recording. And that's giving me some ideas here of some stuff I can model. But it's also nice to have that because as you'll see in a second, I can actually use that as, um, since it's from Unsplash, I can actually use it as like textures in the image because they're all like the license allows you to do that. So um, you'll see me drop in some like random images on here with like um, just some random like stores or like shelves and stuff like that just for something to have in, in this kind of like um this was meant to be like a store 7-eleven kind of space so i'm just trying to find something that kind of matches that so you can see i'm just taking this image of like some bottles here and this is like a really really hacky method but it actually works really well for background assets because it takes barely any time it's really easy to make and it looks fine and you can't really tell what's going on there anyways because it's far enough away that it's like whatever um so that's really nice to do sometimes like for background assets, it usually makes more sense to spend less time on it because that means you can spend more time on the stuff that actually does matter that you're going to see up close and is like bigger in the picture. Um, yeah. So here I'm just dropping on a concrete material onto that main building. I think that was just literally uh, just a base color only. I think that I just dropped in there from textures.com probably. And then here I'm going in and just adding like a kind of just a plane, but then I'm going into this uh, random image from like, a, I guess a store in Japan. And I'm taking like just random chunks of that and then moving that on the UV map to get like a bunch of different variations of random little advertisements that I can put on the on the building here. And then, yeah, I'm just dropping in, uh, duplicating a lot of that shelf thing around. I probably should have spent a bit more time on that since I used it so many times in the render, but it's fine. And then, yeah, just doing some loop cuts, insets, and then extruding those into like make some windows making a little AC unit here, just a little low poly box little thing that I can just use around the scene a bunch of times. Uh, by the way, that glass material is just make it metallic, roughness zero, and then just drop the alpha down a little bit. So no transmission. Um, I like that setup a lot for this kind of stuff, just building windows, that, that kind of shader works really well. And then, yeah, I'm just dropping in uh, a concrete or like asphalt material onto the ground here. I'm using a noise texture to actually drive the roughness, but also I'm actually running that into the normal map as well. And what that does is it makes it like, you get some really, really, really nice uh, puddles with that. If you just use that noise texture to drive the normal map, normal map strength as well. I have a full video on that too, by the way, it's called, uh, I forget what it's called actually. If you just search Max Hay Concrete, you'll find uh, that in-depth video on that wet concrete kind of look. And one thing I just did there is I actually drop in some buildings from my free buildings pack. If you want to get that, I'll just leave a link below. Just a big pack of like 10 or so buildings that I made that I use all the time and stuff like this. And then yeah, I'm doing more screenshots of the Blender UI. Um, it's just fun doing that sometimes, even though it is a little bit of like a cheaty, maybe it's not cheaty, I don't know, maybe it's fine, but it is fun just throwing in Blender UI because people who use Blender see that and they're like, oh, there it is, you know, it's just fun. And I'm actually putting that a lot throughout here. It is kind of like a, a nice way to add detail sometimes too, really easily. Like 
I obviously don't overdo it, but yeah, it is kind of fun to do that. And yeah, I'm duplicating a lot more of these uh, advertisement things here. And what's nice about this kind of setup is that since it's all made from one single image, you can just kind of duplicate it and then move the UV map slightly and then get a totally different advertisement on that plane. Here is, uh, this is basically models from uh, these guys. I think it's called Triple. I think that's how you say it. Um, I just bought a pack from them a while ago of just a bunch of different low poly crowds from, I think you can get their stuff on like CG Trader or Turbo Squid. Um, so that's a really nice pack that I have just so you can like, literally drag and drop a big crowd of people in really, really handy. Um, doesn't work for animated stuff, but for still renders like this, extremely helpful. And yeah, I forgot to mention, I also did add a volume scatter setup here. If you watch any of my other videos, um, you'll see that setup. It's basically just a cube over the whole scene. And then on the cube, you just make the, the material, um, just like a volume scatter and then lower the density basically. And then, um, yeah, I'm using quick mega scans here, which is barely working because they're in the middle of switching from, uh, fab or for, from Quixel bridge to the new fab system. So it's a little bit clunky right now, but still okay. I can still use it. And uh, I'm just taking some trash bags. I don't think you could actually see these very much in the render, but it's kind of nice throwing in trash into my scenes sometimes. Makes it feel more like gritty and cyberpunk, so I like that. And then um, I also took a trash uh, decal from them as well, from Quixel, and then I just put that onto a plane and then put it like one millimeter above the ground. And that gives it, again, much more of a grungy kind of vibe. I really, really like that, like trash everywhere in the city. Um... I guess you wouldn't really see that in somewhere like Japan, if that's where this is, but in Vancouver or like somewhere like that, you'll, you'll see a lot of trash. So I, I kind of like that, you know, to have that in renders, it makes it feel like a little bit darker. Uh, one thing I'm doing here is <laughs> I don't even know why I decided to do this, but I went in and like started making these like emoji things. Um, and that ended up being like the main thing. I think I went to, a, yeah, I went to a website here and like copy pasted a bunch of these, um, like text emojis. And um, yeah, I decided to swap out the main like smiley face thing for one of these. It's just, it's just fun. I don't know. Like sometimes it's, you know, when I make it a render like this, it's really not, um, not that serious at all. So uh, it's, I just do what's fun at the time. So there's an example of that that you can see, but yeah, I'm just using the, the blender text tool and uh, just copy pasting that into like, if you hit like shift a add and then choose text, you can literally just type anything and then get this. So I'm just pasting that emoji stuff into there. And then I just chose a different font. Um, so I went back and forth a few times between um, between this kind of setup and then that original smiley face that I had before. So you might see me flipping back and forth a lot, but yeah, this is the one I ended up with. One trick here too that I didn't mention is uh, turning up the anisotropy. You probably heard me mention this before if you've watched my channel, but um, on the volume scatter uh, setup that you have, if you actually increase the anisotropy slider, that will make the like neon signs in the volume kind of have like a nice glow around them. So I really do like that kind of setup for for like sci-fi cyberpunk renders like this, especially when there's like a really bright light source like this emission thing here. And yeah, at this point here, this is where it just um, I don't know, like the 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 hardest part often is finding like a balance um, in the image and having a nice flow in the image. So at this point, everything is kind of here, like all the stuff that you see in the final picture, all the models, all the textures, they're all kind of in there, but the image looks quite different, obviously from the final result. And that's just because um, it's this stage right here, finding like the right lighting, the right way that the shot is supposed to be composed and just the balance of everything and kind of like all these different composition tricks and stuff too. Uh, getting the colors right and just getting, getting the balance of everything to feel right takes the longest. Um, and uh yeah, it just honestly, it is a, a lot of the time just trial and error for me, even though I do, and I've talked about this before, like I do know all these different compositional rules. Um, sometimes, you know, very often it is actually just m literally just move an object around and does it look better or worse if I moved it left or right? And does the color look better or worse if I make it a bit warmer or a bit colder or switch it around completely? Does it look a bit better if I just move the camera down a bit? I'm just like experimenting with um, basically just random trial and error changes and seeing what is hopefully gonna or just just sticking with whatever looks better you know 
Um, and a lot of the time I'm actually not thinking that much about composition at all while I'm doing it. I might actually be following some compositional rules, like in this case, like a very heavy framing, for example, like that's kind of clear to me as I'm doing this. But for the most part, um, it's, it's literally just like, oh, does it look better if I put a building there? Yes or no. And then if it's yes, then I'll keep it. If it's no, I'll just try something else until I find something where it's like, yes, that works. Yes, that works. And then eventually after doing that enough times, it's like you have something that is pretty good. But um, yeah, like uh, just know that a lot of times while I'm making it in the, in the actual moment of creating it, it's, it's not like I'm thinking super deeply, but like the meaning and like the composition is just like, fuck, like if I move this building here, does it look better? No, let me try something else. No, let me try something else. Let's move it over here. No, let's try it over up here. Oh, that looks cool. Okay, next change. That's really like, that's the majority of the process, to be honest. Um, okay, so here I'm going into the traffic add on. So this is by Engon, uh, same guys that make Botanic. Now, I actually do not like this add on. Every time I open up Blender, it disappears and I have to reinstall it. It's super annoying, but the models are really good. Um, so if you just want like traffic in your in your renders and you just want like an easy one and done car solution, I guess this is a pretty good one. Um, maybe I'm doing something wrong with the add-on. Maybe there's some setting I got to change. I don't know. But every time I boot it up, it disappears and I have to reinstall it. It's super annoying. But you can also use it through the asset browser too, but you can't control the lights and stuff like you can in the add-on. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But um, anyways, that's what I used here. So I'd bring in like supercars here for some reason. I just kind of wanted it to be like that. Um that kind of vibe where it's like your downtown there's like it's kind of gritty and neon and cyberpunk and there's like really expensive cars everywhere um definitely gives you a just a certain feeling when you have that kind of stuff in the scene also kind of helps tell a story of like what this is um you know just it just adds to it when you have like a certain type of car in there i guess it just kind of creates a certain vibe um so yeah uh that's what i'm doing here now, I actually moved these around a lot, so it'll seem like putting this car in the, the middle of the scene. Um, I actually kept it there for a while, but I, I felt like it just made it too, like, the, too much going on. Um, like, it's almost like too many focal points, too much stuff calling for your attention all over the place. Like, if there's literally, like, bright neon signs right below that is, like, a big blue face neon sign, and right below that is, like, a person standing there silhouetted, and then right below that is, like, a fucking Lamborghini you know, it's, it's a bit too much. So, um, I did end up like moving that off to the side for the final result and not making the, the car like a main focus of the artwork. Um, but it's still kind of in there to, to still try and have a bit of that cyber, you know, dystopian kind of vibe a little bit. And yeah, I'm switching over just different cam angles, trying out the panoramic lens. Um, you can see me doing test renders along the way too. That's something that I always do just to make sure I'm uh, on the right track. You can see I'm actually at low samples here, like 128 samples. Uh, and actually, I'm at 50% of the final resolution that I'm going to do. And that means that I can do test renders really, really fast and get a, a good sense of what it looks like for the final result, but not wait a long time for it and not like break the flow that I'm in. Um, so yeah, low quality test renders will give you a much better idea of what it looks like than just like the, the viewport. But... Um, I still keep the quality low enough to where it's really, really fast. So there I'm just bringing in some some like wires, some sci-fi wires. Uh, the way you make these is just add a curve and then in the curve settings, just find the bevel setting and literally increase the bevel amount and then kind of just spam a bunch of those into a cluster and then convert it to a mesh. And then you could just save that mesh into your asset browser. Um, I think I've done videos on that before. Um, if I, I'll, I'll probably do one in the future as well. But anyways, those wires are just... Um, I think that those are actually from the the course packs. If you have that, that's in your browser somewhere. But yeah, um, those I actually really like that for bringing in like leading lines in places where it's hard to like um, the the where the composition isn't that strong. You can bring in like lines in the picture to help guide your attention and like create visual flow into a certain point. So I've actually placed these wires deliberately into a spot where it's like leading your attention towards that main neon sign. So in hectic compositions, a, a tool like that is really, really helpful. And it doesn't have to be wires. Wires is just what I chose here, but it can be literally any line. But, um, you know, a curved wire does work quite well for that. And yeah, I'm bringing in like pipes, as you saw on the side there, just for some extra detail that can just get chucked on there. 
Um, I really like pipes and air conditioning units and that kind of stuff just for kind of like side detail like that just because it's makes it feel much more gritty cyberpunk and also just feels like which is basically like just easy free detail doesn't add like high poly anything it's just like random pipes you know so uh, that's something that's really easy way to just increase the level of detail and make it look cooler just throw in some like pipes air conditioning units garbage cans trash bins uh you know street street stuff like that really really does make it a lot more interesting to look at and adds detail and yeah i'm just uh just trying to find the right camera angle i don't I don't know when I switched over the color, but I did end up switching it back to red, which I found looked better. But it actually does look kind of cool here in blue. I actually do like that. That could have easily worked. Um, so I guess I just didn't feel it in blue. I don't know. Now, I thought I was done here, but um, I ended up taking a break for a couple days and then coming back and, and switching it up a little bit. Because I think, as you'll see here in a second, it looks kind of cool, but it's just a bit hectic. Like when you see it, it's just like a bit too much going on. So that's something I like to avoid is, um, you know, when you look at the picture for the first time, I really want you to be able to tell uh, very fast as a viewer, like what is going on in the picture. And I, I don't mean like the story necessarily, I, like, that can kind of be ambiguous, but I want like all the visual information to be clear to the eye. Like I want you to be able to tell like, okay, this is clearly a city. There's a car, there's, th there's a sign there. And if it's like, too much going on too much competing for like where your attention goes it's just um it's just unpleasant to look at so i think that was kind of happening here so i, I did go back and i switched it up but honestly looking back it's not it's not that bad um it could have worked like this but i think it was better the the result that i got afterwards but you can see me here doing these adjustments in photoshop because I, I was at the time feeling like okay this is the final result but um yeah, I did end up sleeping on it, taking a couple of days away from it, and then coming back, and then um, I think improving it. So yeah, sometimes that is a really good strategy: is just literally take a break for a couple of days, come back with a fresh perspective, and then you can actually it's it's going to be much easier to make decisions rather than you know when you've been making an artwork for the last three hours, you've been staring at the same picture. It's like you you get to this point where you don't even know anymore. You don't even know what is good and what's bad, and what looks good and like. Your, your brain is like so fried from looking at the same thing the same picture for like three hours that your judgment is like really really off um so yeah taking a break and coming back with a fresh perspective is really one of the best things you can do sometimes for like just overall judgment calls for the picture one rule that i was definitely trying to follow consciously here was um basically the way i'm trying to balance colors so what I'll usually do, if you have, if you have multiple colors, say you have like a red and, and a blue, uh, two like two different main colors in the scene. So in this case, there's like the blue sign and the red things above it. Um, I generally try and balance that in a way that it's like 80-20. So 80% one dominant color, so mostly blue in this case, and then like 20% an accent color that's like red that supports it. And when you do it that way, rather than having it a 50-50 split of red and blue, for example, um, if you have it more 50 50 it's almost like each color doesn't actually look as vibrant as if you have it 80 20. so for some reason when you have like 80 percent blue and 20 percent red or it could be the other way around the the accent color actually makes both colors look more colorful in a way um and I, that probably has something to do with like the way your eye works i don't know the reason behind that but um anytime i do that i do find that like the colors just pop and look so much more extreme and vibrant when you do it that way and you you have like one dominant side to the colors and then one supporting accent side that isn't fighting with that other color but it's just supporting it because it's like less dominant than the other one um it just like you can kind of see here right right there right like when it's mostly red and then the accent is this nice kind of teal blue the teal looks so much more teal and the red looks so much more red with it with it like that 80 20 distribution rather than if it's like 50 50. Um, so that's a cool trick that I'll, I will intentionally try and follow now with my colors. And I have noticed that it looks a lot better when I do that. Anyways, at this point here, I decided to switch back to the other uh, emoji text thing as like the main neon sign here. 
Um, the only difference here is that in the actual final one, I, I made that red instead of blue, but it's, I literally just changed the color. Everything else is pretty much the exact same. Um, so yeah, I'm just bringing it through Photoshop, doing my basic adjustments as usual, running the mist pass uh, through there, just brushing in kind of like the smoky effect using the mist pass, adding a bit more glow in Photoshop, um, basically also brightening up certain areas that I want to be like, uh, to st just pop out a little bit more, darkening some areas that I don't want to be as prominent, like mostly around the edges, the street below, um, just anywhere where I feel like sh should feel like just not... Uh, I don't know, sometimes actually making it darker on the edges too does make it feel a bit more like dark and gritty. So I really wanted to lean into that here. And you'll see me make it even darker in a second as well. And then running it through the camera raw filter, uh, that's just basically a photo editor. Like you could just make the, adjust the brightness, contrast, sharpening, that kind of stuff. I think I boosted the clarity a lot. Um, and yeah, there's the final result right here. I did actually go back into Blender and then render a desktop version. So I'll put that up here too. So yeah, hopefully that was useful. If you're really interested in these kinds of environments, I highly recommend my environments course that I put out last year. Um, that's helped a lot of people with this sort of style of environment. So if you're interested in making stuff that has the kind of vibe of the stuff that I show on this channel and on my Instagram, um, yeah, I'll leave a link to that below. And yeah, uh, hopefully this gives you some, you know, ideas of some cyberpunk cool stuff you can make in Blender. So yeah, thanks for watching and bye.